Today we'll be looking over at the Baba Yaga, the boogeyman who hunts boogeymen with a pencil. You'll want to stick around, for tonight I will show you a homebrew martial archetype that lets you play as the relentless one-man army, John Wick. I'll also give some build advice at the end to fully maximize the archetype's features. Maybe even leave a little surprise homebrew. Hello and thank you for being here, and welcome to my wife is VMC. I'm DMV and you're watching Husbando Homebrew, a show where we take pop culture to pen and paper. So, is everyone comfy at the table? The price of admission is but the click of the like button. So MC and I decided to watch John Wick 4 several weeks ago, and while my brain on action movies was on full blast, I unfortunately couldn't get the indie brain to turn off. Every action scene and every maneuver had me thinking, yeah, Battle Master works, sure. Maybe a bit of Monk, but not too far, since monks literally have magic, like understanding all spoken language and never aging. But then I was thinking, maybe Rogue? I don't know, all those attacks are a bit much, and even flavoring sneak attack only implies a single target. Now, multiclassing and build theory crafting is all well and good, but ultimately I didn't like the idea of having a build, quote unquote, come online at like level 13 with three different multiclasses. Not a lot of players get to organically experience that outside of one shots. And that's when I started thinking of homebrew features, because of course I did. And it was the only way I could stave off thoughts of unemployment or being able to surpass the Zarki vs. Byakuya video. And with that, I had the design goals in mind for molding the subclass. First, the features need to rely on grappling or shoving. The movies feature a lot of jujitsu and judo, and most of John's takedowns involve grappling before double tapping. Second, he needs to be survivable. Yes, most fighters with their D10 hit dice and second wins already do that job fairly well, but I think the concept of this aging warrior just operating on sheer spite needs to be represented mechanically. Third, he needs to be able to lay a bit of the hurt. But I need to also make sure I don't overstep the boundaries of full marshals like Battlemaster or Brute, if only to keep things from becoming an unbalanced mess. Fourth, the build needs to feel like it could operate solo. I know that's not how D&D is meant to be played or intended to be played, and it can get ridiculous to balance encounters for a single player. Believe me, I've done it. But I want to at least give that feeling that the subclass can operate on its own, but doesn't necessarily do it poorly in a group situation either. I'll give some tips at the end on how a DM can balance a single player game for a player that's using the subclass. That's three things I owe you at the end. Whew. This is because, well, John Wick is basically a quiet 90s action hero who does a lot of the things he does on his own. I actually have a fifth goal, but I'll tell you all about it in a bit as I go through all the features. So let's create a new fighter, one who's tired of warfare and really just wants a quiet and peaceful life. But as someone with incredible skill, ultimately someone or something will drag you back into war. Whatever brought you back into this life of blood and bullets certainly sent a heck of an invitation. Whatever brings you back ultimately leads you to a club. The sounds are so loud you could barely hear your own thoughts, with the many colored lights flashing across your eyeline, revealing the place to be packed with non-combatants just enjoying the music. The target? Some rich kid who's had it coming for way too long. He's likely in the club's back door, hot tub, and spa a service available only to those who work in a specific line of business. First up is bonus proficiencies. Athletics is a core aspect of this subclass and you'll find out why in a bit. The other is stealth but to a much lesser degree. These come with expertise if you're already proficient to emphasize what you'll need to focus on in order to make the most out of this subclass. You walk towards the back areas where you first use your high stealth to get past one guard. Unfortunately, another guard spots you, but your quick thinking lets you engage in close quarters combat, catching the guard at the sleeve and taking the fight to the ground. This is where close quarters adept come in. This feature doesn't impose disadvantage on grapple targets even if you are knock prone. Last of the core features is Relentless Combatant. This feature introduces a new die called Relentless Die. It starts off as a d6 but then grows into a d10 all the way. This die will come into play in several different areas, but first is Relentless Takedown that adds your Relentless Die Roll to your Athletics check, so any pushing, shoving, and most importantly grappling gets a nice little boost. Your tenacity pays off, and you manage to get the guard to the ground. 
You don't want to cause too much of a stir, so you take a pencil that's on the guard's pocket and immediately get to work. This is actually part of the bonus proficiencies feature, which grants you an improvised weapon proficiency so you can use pretty much anything, even your belt. The guard struggles against your attack, but you are more relentless and driven than they are. Forced confinement lets you make a weapon attack or unarmed strike, or do a second shove to knock a target prone as a bonus action after a successful grapple or shove. This attack adds your relentless die to that attack roll. As the pen sinks in, you aim to hit some key arteries to ensure the guard's demise, as they are completely unable to struggle against your relentless assault. Unfortunately, you didn't leave that scuffle without some scrapes of your own. You walk it off with some grit, which is the last property of Relentless Combatant that grants THP at the start of each of your turns. And this is the fifth goal that I alluded to earlier. What makes John Wick special isn't just his experience, training, or even the fact that he's played by the most breathtaking actor in Hollywood. <laughs> You're breathtaking! It's his relentlessness and endless wealth of tenacity that makes him special. And that relentless die is how I intend to represent his el It's his relentlessness and endless wealth of tenacity that makes him special. And that relentless die is how I intend to represent this element of his character. You get in through a corridor that leads into the lounge, where people can freshen up before heading to the baths. It's a narrow space, but luckily you have some options. Seeing at least three people, you manage to quickly hide among the small group, following their gait without them noticing. And this is where the 7th level feature comes in, called Situational Focus. This one lets you adapt to several situations, and one of them is being able to hide as a bonus action while within at least three other creatures. John kinda only does this a few times, and pretty much only in the third movie, but I'd be remiss not to feature that. You enter the lounge without much issue. Unfortunately, several guards manage to sight you, alerting the rest. Some of them have quite a bit of body armor on. You come up to a near point-blank distance and manage to catch that guard in the small gaps of their armor. Point-blank shot lets you ignore their resistances against your weapon damage. You're a little too far to be effective with your current weapon to hit the other guards, so you quickly switch out to a bigger and farther reaching weapon to take out the threat. Quick switch lets you have one free weapon switch mid-attack action with additional relentless die bonus to the attack roll. You run to the baths knowing that your target might be there. The first guard immediately find themselves on the ground thanks to your grappling prowess. As soon as another guard opens fire, your grappling leverage comes into play. This is your 10th level feature that emphasizes on your grappling once more. As soon as the guard fires at you, you use your defensive switch to avoid the attack. This one can also potentially waste an attack against you if you're swapping places and you're far enough away from it. As you grapple with this guard, you leverage on your defensive exploit until they expire. This property lets you add your relentless die to damage rolls. You dispatch the guard you are grappling with relentless swiftness. But another one immediately takes your attention away from your actual target, who at this point is in the process of leaving the baths. The guard in front of you swings a knife your way, but you manage to blunt the momentum and immediately bring them to the ground thanks to relentless grappler. This feature lets you use your reaction to avoid an attack or punish them for even hitting you. You chase after your quarry past the baths and through a corridor that seems to loop back into the main entrance. You can already hear the music against your heart even before you go through the door. The lights blind you for a brief moment as you return to the foyer. In spite of the bright colors, you maintain visual on the fleeing silhouette of your target as you continue your hunt. The dance hall is a chaotic mess, and it isn't helped by the fact that so many of the guards have already begun to converge upon your location. You immediately rush forwards towards the first guard you see and plant several rounds into their body. The 15th level feature, Committed Offense, lets you survive crowds better and lets you really lay on the hurt against a single target via focus fire. The conditions are a bit strict to trigger this damage, but I did this as a way to somewhat balance it out against the battle master or the brute. The wording also might throw you off since you can do this once per attack action, but that just means you can do this after you use an action surge in the same turn. The first guard falls quickly to your assault, but the rest of the guards are now about to open fire in spite of the non-combatants in the vicinity. You fire downwards to dissuade them from attacking thanks to this feature's crowd control property, which reduces their next attack rolls against you and slows down their approach. The dance floor has now been drenched with the blood of your enemies, as the crowd has devolved into a frightened frenzy that's begun to pour into the entrance. 
You take advantage of the chaos to hide amongst the crowd, but nonetheless your quarry manages to take a cheap shot that forces you to the floor. What your target doesn't know is that you have the 18th level feature of Unyielding Will. Your quarry begins to squat over your bleeding form to gloat, but such poor decisions would have consequences. This final feature lets you cheat death, letting you stay conscious while making death saving throws and letting you take an attack action after making a successful one and potentially bring you back up from the brink. With one final shot, your quarry finally falls before you. Stumbling to your feet, you take one last look at your target and walk away from the scene to make a dinner reservation. Build-wise, the feats I'd focus on would be Grappler as early as possible. Tough is also a good pick for the extra survivability, which is something Mr. Wick has in spades. Honorable mentions are the Fighting Initiate feat to get either Unarmed Fighting, Fighting Style, or Archery Fighting Style. The former specifically deals passive damage to grappled enemies. Another honorable mention would be Crossbow Expert, and this is to maximize your shooting ability if we decide to go that route. For skills, go with Athletics and Stealth right out the gate so you can take advantage of the subclass's expertise. Then go with Perception and potentially Medicine. The last one is interesting because in the past movies, John has shown some level of precision and knowledge when it comes to the human anatomy. Of course, space your stats out between dexterity and strength and max them out however you can. Stat-wise, I advise you to lean a bit more towards strength rather than dexterity since this is a grappling heavy build. Though definitely keep your constitution at a plus two or higher since I think it's fairly in line with the character's theme. Alternatively, you can lean heavily on the shooting style of dexterity and even put the sharpshooter feet on it. While you won't be able to maximize your grappling features this way, you can treat the relentless die as a means to mitigate your strength stat deficiency for all your athletic needs. For mental stats, invest in wisdom and maybe a bit of intelligence. Charisma is definitely a dumb stat for John Wick because he has respect rather than riz. So if you're a DM who wants to run this for a single player, the standard setup would be to throw in low CR mobs adjusted to your player's level. Medium encounters should be composed of CRs no higher than a third of your player's level, and hard to deadly is when you can put in a single higher CR creature amidst a bunch of mooks. I wouldn't recommend legendary actions for boss creatures, but if you do, reduce the mooks by a third. Alternatively, you can use the minion trait from 4th edition, where minions go down after taking at least one point of damage. For XP, keep it standard across sessions or just use milestone leveling so your player is less incentivized to take down hostiles. For weapons, it's easy enough to reflavor any ranged weapons for firearms. Heck, John Wick 4 literally had people use bows and arrows, so it's not really that far off. Armor can also be reflavored to look like their cool special suits that block bullets, with their shields acting as them lifting the lapel to block shots. Feel free to waive the action requirement to donning and doffing shields, but make it clear to your player that it goes both ways for both player and enemies. Creature reflavoring should be kept to martial enemies to keep it simple. You really wouldn't want to have to deal with how spellcasting works in the modern world, but go ham on any and all fantasy elements if you decide to run a fantasy-themed John Wick game. NPCs and world also need to have that secret society thing going on, where just about anybody or the nobodies from any level of society can be a member of some faction of the secretive high table. If you happen to run into a situation where several NPCs are talking to each other, I highly, highly recommend you use third-person perspective narration to avoid that awkward moment of you talking to yourself. Third-person narration also lets you expedite conversations between NPCs by abridging the gist of their discussion and maybe sprinkling in a few lines or two in the first person to keep the moments engaging. However, if you must RP in the first person for all NPCs to allow your player to intervene, you can do so by using transitionary phrases like saying, Koji stops his daughter from saying anything foolish and tells her, Be sure to like and subscribe to my wife is DMC. <laughs> In either case, these small tips should be a good starting point to get a better feel for how to run a single player John Wick game. So, how would I do with the goals? I like to think I covered everything, but if you think I missed a design goal or did a poor job of hitting one, make sure to give me an earful in the comments. If I got them all, you're obligated to praise me in the comments section. Hey. And hey, if you want to go the extra mile with us, feel free to share this with your dog. Hopefully the tips at the end also gave some value to you as a player or the DM. And yes, I haven't forgotten I promised you three things. 
So here's the third one. See, I actually made two homebrew subclasses based on John Wick. One for Fighter, and another for Rogue. Let me know in the comments which one you like more. You'll find the subclass documents in our Ko-Fi page while you find posts of our homebrew content. If you want a similar Gunner-style subclass, here's one based on the Christian Bale 2007 cult classic, Equilibrium. This has been My Wife is DMC. I'm DMV and my wife and I hope you have a great day ahead.